and welcome to Pokesports, a competitive Pokemon podcast. I'm Mike, and for the second week in a row, I play with one Pokemon on the field. I'm Kevin. I play with two Pokemon on the field. Well, okay, hold on. Hold on. Momentous occasion has uh, just happened on the podcast. There's there's a good reason why I didn't come up with anything, because typically the things that I say um, yeah. stem from conversations we had right before the podcast. Right. And... We didn't talk about anything that I can say on the podcast right no, before that's the true. podcast. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was a very morose uh, time that we've had before the podcast today. Kevin had to <laughs> update his entire everything. And we ended up starting like half an hour after we were supposed to. Mm -hmm. But you know what? Your stuff is nice and updated now. Congratulations. Yes. yes. Now it'll it'll just... Keep doing its thing until it forces me to do it again. Yup. That's the fun part is that, that computers need to be updated or else they stop working. Typically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So did you know that you're supposed to turn your computer off when you're not using it? No, that uses yeah, yeah, too yeah. much power or something, right? No, I don't know. No. You're supposed to turn it off when you're not using it. Oh, boy. It does this thing called have an uptime. And if you let that number get too high, it starts messing with some things. Wow. Now, ask yeah. what my uptime was. I, do you have that number available? Yeah, out of curiosity, okay. I, I control deleted and clicked my task manager to check before I did it. Very interesting. All right, tell me. 147 days. <laughs> so kevin just performed his biannual computer restart <laughs> like you've gone to the dentist more times than you've restarted your computer i have more wisdom teeth out than the the amount of times i've restarted yeah. this computer yes uh <laughs> the yeah i mean and this is the computer I render the Patreon stuff out. I render the yeah. TikTok stuff out. Like, I use this computer. I record every video you see on this mm -hmm. computer. This computer on works. YouTube.com slash Pokesports, no <laughs> yeah, less. Yeah, 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 yeah. Send them there. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to see what a 147-year-old computer, a day-old computer can do, go on over to the YouTube channel and watch a YouTube video. It looks a lot like my opponents did in the Dunsparce video when I was paraflinching them the entire time. Yeah, that was that was fun to watch. It was fun because it worked. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's 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 the only thing the Dunsparce can do. And even the comment section was like, "Paraflinch is whack, but the Dunsparce is goaded." <laughs> but you're using the Dunsparce. <laughs> I, I don't like. The things you did, but <laughs> I give it a pass because it came from that. <laughs> I hated it when it was Togekiss. Yeah, I love exactly. it when it's Dadan Sparse. Also, where's Togekiss? Is it's not in the game? Is it in the game? Oh, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> it is not in the game. <laughs> That's Man. surprising. That's like one of the staples, right? Yeah. That's like not having Pikachu in a game, right? I, I can't believe like, I've been uh, so, I guess, satisfied with the current roster of Pokemon mm -hmm. that like I never even bothered to think about all the ones that aren't in the game. If you could terrestrialize Togekiss, what terror would you give it? Oh, fair. Uh, huh. I have my answer because I thought about it Togekiss. before you did. OK, well, then you tell me yours. I'm going to say fire. OK. Because... Fire, it's flying, so they're not going to go for a ground move on you. Oh, never mind, because then they can hit you with rocks. Take it back. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Steel. Steel, well, yeah, I think that's just kind of the, the right answer for most fairies. Fairy right? flying specifically, though, because they're not going to go for a ground move on you because you're floating. Mm. They'd have to be you, brave. You could they're not going to punch you because you're quad resisted to it, too. True. Uh, I feel like if Fluttermane didn't exist, then that would be the Pokemon that you could also tear a fairy and hit him with like a much stronger Dazzling Gleam. Give him the Razzle Dazzle. Give him the Razzle Dazzle. I feel like, yeah, Fluttermane hitting that 135 special attack is like, that was the thing that, that broke 
Togekiss, right? Because Togekiss had 120 special attack. It had 80 speed. So, like, it was fast enough. It was strong enough. Who's Flutterman? But I don't know. I don't know either. No, I haven't seen him in a month. <laughs> Fl- Flutter who? Flutter at what? Who main? Right now, the only fairy type I play is... Uh, what's a fairy type? Oh, that no, is... Primarina, right? Yeah, I guess Prim. That would be the first one, yeah. Prim, I was going to say Sylveon, but I'm like, hey, no way, I'm going to say Sylveon before something yeah. else. I mean, that's not true. <laughs> okay, so Whimsicott? I'm scrolling. I'm, yeah, I'm scrolling through Picolytics. It's Prim, Wim. Prim, Wim. And then Zim. nothing. <laughs> Hat. <laughs> Hatterene, I guess. Oh, actually, you can you can sort by type. So we've got Primarina, Whimsicott, Ninetales, Alola, okay. Ninetales. Yeah, I've seen a couple of those. Uh, Grimmsnarl, Hatterene, and then Sylveon. I and would then argue my boy Fable. Yeah, but you know what? I would argue that all of the things you said, yes, are not good because of their fairy typing. They're better known for their second, their other typing. Like I would say, Prim would is more of that, yeah. a water type. Wim is mm-hmm. more of a grass type. A little nine tails is the ice. The first one that is actually just exclusively good for being a fairy that clicks spread moves is Sylveon. Hatterene. Oh uh, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> so <By> today, point four percent. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wow, that's so true. It it really is that little of a of a difference there. So we made a promise last week that we would take some time and enjoy Armourous. Armourous? It was an Armourous from me. It was an Armourous from Kevin because he actually went and went and tried out Armourous. I have not tried out Armourous. So I figured in, in Pokemon Unite today while talking about that, we'll give the breakdown of the new character as we so often do sometimes. And Kevin, you can tell me uh if this is accurate or not accurate and i have not played armor rouge by the way i've just played against it <laughs> you've you've been in the same room as an armor rouge which is I've honestly the, more than i can say i've so, been in the armor's rouge yes i have <laughs> you've been in the armor's room it's a hard word to say armor rouge all right so uh looking at armor rouge on unite-db.com which is of course where we look at all of our uh, Pokemon Unite characters, not a sponsor. Please sponsor us, I guess. You would say that this is the database of Unite, yes. It indeed could be. <laughs> it might be. I've I've really uh, taken to the the comment sections on TikTok <clears throat> that has been completely run overrun by like Gen Z, who's like, bro, might be a database. <laughs> it's wonderful. Uh, so Armourouge's passive ability is Flash Fire. When this Pokemon takes special attack damage, sorry, when this Pokemon takes special attack based damage, it's got to be based <laughs> from opposing Pokemon. The damage this Pokemon takes is, re- is reduced by 20% for three seconds and their next auto attack deals additional damage. This ability goes on a 10 second cooldown after it ends. So right off the bat, it's like this Pokemon needs to get hit in order to hit harder. Hmm. Typically, that's not a great thing unless they could take the hit. Yeah. But, I mean, this is great into special attackers. Not so great into physical attackers. It doesn't scream glass cannon. It, in fact, screams the opposite of that. And if I look at, like, what's a, what's a glass cannon type Pokemon that, that you would think of? Uh, Gardevoir. Gardevoir. So if I were to bring up Gardevoir here, which you love to play, and just look at level 15 stats here, what I'm looking for is the difference between HP and defense. And oh my gosh. So Gardevoir sitting at 6,320 HP. Armory sitting at at level 15. Uh, Armory sitting at 7,200 Okay, so this thing is so, tankier, yes. Almost a thousand more HP, yeah. Defense, uh, Armourouge has about 130 more defense than Gardevoir, who sits at 174. Armourouge sits at 300. Uh, okay. Gardevoir sits at 138 special defense. Armourouge sits at 240. 
So, like, so it's going to double around. the defenses. Yeah. yeah. But now, what's the special attack comparison between Guard of War and Armorers, though? So, yeah, that's the thing, right? Guard of is War sits at 1050, 1050. Armorers yeah. sits at 700. So this is definitely, like, it, it kind of feels, I don't even know what to compare it to, because me and Mike have played League uh, many years ago. Sure. Uh, so we like to draw comparisons between the two, because a lot of them are very similar. Mm-hmm. I, I can't even find a comparison here. Like, what is a tanky special? Is this like a rumble, maybe? Is it you got some fire vibes? Yeah, like, who wants to be taking hits? No, I'm sure there, lot, there's yeah. someone out there, but I I can't think of it right now. Slips my mind. Special but it's attacker. interesting, because it's like, it's like the defenses are high enough, but the special attack isn't as high as Gardevoir, but it can be as high as Gardevoir if it gets hit. So the the downside is you lose a little bit of HP when you get hit, but on the upside, <clears throat> your special attack then rivals uh, that of Guardi. It just depends. Okay, this is the kind of Pokemon that, like, looking at base stat wise, we can't really make a solid determination of whether or not this will be good. Right. You know, this this has to get carried by the abilities right now, because currently it's just in my eyes um, weaker, tankier guard for. Sure. Yeah. Uh, as a char cadet, its auto attack becomes a boosted auto attack with every third attack, dealing increased damage. Whoa, never seen standard. that before. Oh. <laughs> um, as an armor rouge, it has a much longer description. Uh, every time the user, every time the user hits an opposing Pokemon with a basic attack, the user's cannon gauge increases up to five times. When the cannon gauge is full, the user's next basic attack consumes the entire cannon gauge, hitting in a large area of effect with basic damage and additionally in a second close range area of effect with the boosted attack damage. I don't know why that's such a long paragraph. They could have made that two sentences. It's just, if you attack five times, your next attack explodes. It's like, <laughs> you know. <laughs> we, need, we need a TLDR mic edit for all of yeah. these like you just need to come up with a web you're just gonna take screenshots of this website you're gonna have a, a little bit of a cliff notes on the side it's gonna be like big boom after five <laughs> i mean <laughs> am i wrong i don't think no, so no you're, you uh, are second, as right as possible now that's only the first paragraph the second paragraph here says when the user hits an opposing pokemon with a basic attack a blazing mark is, at- is applied to them for seven seconds up to three marks can be applied with subsequent marks refreshing the duration. If the user hits an opposing Pokemon with three blazing marks using fire spin or armor cannon, all the, <clears throat> all the marks are consumed and additional damage is dealt to the opposing Pokemon, equal to 10% of their max HP, capped to 1,000 damage. So this does percentage damage, that's not bad. There's a mm-hmm. six second cooldown after consuming the marks before the user can apply blazing marks on the same opposing Pokemon again. So that's Darius. Mm-hmm. Uh, no that's kindred uh can be kindred is a physical attacker but yeah stacking until one pops yeah i mean honestly this this makes up for a lot of the, like the weak special attack that it does have so what you're going to be wanting to do with this pokemon is what i'm saying is cycling your abilities through your auto attacks right you gotta go auto 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 ability auto 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 ability Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. Right. Yeah. So you you want to like throw everything in the kitchen sink at your opponent. It seems like you don't want to duel with this Pokemon though. You don't want to one v one this Pokemon. You don't. Nah, because he he deals more damage by getting hit, and then he's also doing percentage health to you. Mm. <laughs> so that's yeah, I fair. I, I don't think you should, unless you're a physical attacker. If you're a special attacker, you should just run the other way. Mm-hmm. If you're a physical mm-hmm. attacker, like, what, well, you got nothing to lose. He doesn't gain more damage by you hitting him. Like, if you're a Garchomp, go for it. You mean you're not wrong. As a Char Cadet, you get two different moves. Incinerate at level 1 or 3, which has the user attack the designated opposing Pokemon with a flame, setting them ablaze and dealing damage over time for 4 seconds. When a Pokemon on the opposing team that's ablaze picks up a berry, the berry's effects are halved. Oh, that's kind of cool. A berry. Oh, like the citrus, citrus berry. berry. Oh, yeah. I thought they meant. For some reason, my brain went greedent. I'm like, okay, good. You're good against greedent. What does that mean? Oh, but true. Okay. I actually berry. didn't think about that. It's. I guess that includes greedent, right? 
Or does it only include the movement speed berry and the citrus berry? Yeah, I was thinking it's just the citrus berry and the movement speed berry, but... I mean, it will be kind of cool if that like really hard countered Credent too, because <laughs> it's like okay, yeah, you're gonna specifically as a Char Cadet only. Yeah, at yeah. Level one to three. <laughs> Your other move that you could pick at level one or three is Will O Wisp, uh, which has the user shoot a flame in the designated direction, dealing damage to opposing Pokemon hit, leaving them burned and decreasing their movement speed by twenty percent for two seconds. After using this move, the user's next auto attack becomes a boosted attack. Uh, okay. So yeah, very like very move basic. two type of move. It you you shoot a flame, one of the flames slows. Right. You can't really overtune uh, a first move. No. Nah. Yeah. So incinerate can either become fire spin or armor cannon. Now this is where things start to get a little spicy. And in doing research for this, I've found that people haven't really decided or people are clickbaiting the different uh, type of types of movesets. I don't know, but it seems like some people are like, I really love fire spin. And some people are like, I really love armor cannon. I'm looking at just the numbers right now. I've already made my decision, but I'll let you read through them. Oh, boy. Here we go. So for fire spin. Has the user generate a fierce vortex of fire around themselves, dealing damage to opposing Pokemon hit. Each time the user deals damage with this move, their defense and special defense are increased by 25% for 6 seconds. This effect can stack up to 3 times and the duration is refreshed on hit. Whose defense goes up? Yours? Uh, yeah. That's Armor a good thing. Okay, yeah. so tankier. So that's every time this user deals damage with that move. So it can it go deals up by 25% three times. six seconds, okay. Yeah. yeah. The vortex lasts three seconds, and its duration is increased by one second if the user hits opposing Pokemon with an auto attack. Oh. This extended duration can stack up to three times to a total vortex duration of six seconds. Okay. So, so th th yeah. this is a dueling move. Super, super dueling move. Absolutely. Yeah. And I feel like you'd want to build possibly some kind of attack speed metals mm -hmm. uh with Maybe, that yeah. just so you can get that uh get those stacks up as fast as possible but at the same time yeah i feel like you're given enough of a buffer to get your three stacks every time with auto attacks mm -hmm. i don't know uh and then at level 11 that increases movement speed by 30 percent uh when this move hits an opposing pokemon so you you actually move faster when you uh when you hit someone with fire spin the only this, issue i mm -hmm. have with this move uh is that this is an area of effect that you that like surrounds you armor right. is a ranged attacker i don't know if you want to be that close to them like I, do you want them there in your sphere so it seems like the range of your auto attack is pretty much the range of fire spin okay so it's not, you're not long range. You're not Inteleon here. You're not right. Decidui here. Right. And plus, you know, I have a feeling if Will-O-Wisp loses, uh, decreases movement speed, then Will-O-Wisp's uh, upgrade is going to have some kind of movement speed lowering yeah. uh, effect. Where then if, if Fire Spin is increasing your movement speed when you hit, a, hit another Pokemon... You slow them down, you speed yourself up, you're hitting them with more ticks of fire spin, you're increasing your defense and your special defense at the same time. Like you become this like massive tank for six seconds. It's like you're just this unstoppable force mm -hmm. moving down the lane. Um this movement speed increase starts from the first tick of the vortex that hits uh, an opposing Pokemon and lasts until the vortex ends. If three auto attacks have extended, it extended the duration of fire spin, the movement speed increase lingers for three seconds. Okay. okay. So six Defense seconds of up, movement speed. Speed up. Good. Cool. You can also choose armor cannon. And this armor is the cannon. one I decided on already. Is that right? Okay. Uh, yeah, once you read the damage slash explosion percentage on special attack, you'll understand why. Oh, I think I understand already. <laughs> Has the user combined their shoulder armor and start uh, charging power? 
When charged past a minimum duration, the user fires a blazing ball of flame. The user releases a shockwave in front of themselves uh, when firing, dealing damage to opposing Pokemon in close range. The fired ball of flame explodes when it hits an opposing Pokemon or after it travels a set distance, dealing damage to opposing Pokemon, leaving them unable to act for 0.45 seconds. The user... Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the user's defense and special defense are decreased by 5% while this move is on cooldown. And that 5% doesn't seem like that seems super negligible. Yeah. Um, and then at level 11, it increases the range of the move and uh, auto attacks. Oh, and also your auto attacks. Yeah. <laughs> oh, now you want to read what the damage percentage is on the I, explosion. I think <laughs> I definitely like armor cannon better. Yeah. The, yeah. Uh, the damage. <laughs> So this this is about to get very numbers heavy, so bear with me. But the explosion damage is 265% of your special attack plus 16, the number 16, uh, multiplied by your level minus one plus 500. <laughs> to put that in perspective. So much. Fire spin. <laughs> to put that in perspective, fire spin, although it can hit six times, Right. So keep that in mind when you're looking at these numbers. The damage for fire spin is 35 percent of special attack, which is 230 percent less than your explosion. Not multiplied by six uh, plus two times your level minus one plus 160. So it's still armor cannon. Yeah. It, and we're going to take a step even further. Armor cannon has a shorter cooldown than fire spin. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. It's got a two, se one and a half second less cooldown than fire spin, and it's ranged. I don't know. I think I really like. There's also <laughs> shockwave damage apparently, which is additional. Yeah. It's not even included. It's like, oh, okay. There's I'm, just more. I'm a big fan of skill shots. To yeah. be honest, like I, when I played League of Legends, I would I played a ton of Zareth. Yeah. And Zareph is skill shots and on skill shots That's on all skill is, shots. Yeah. That's all he is. And Armor Cannon is exactly like Zareth's E, except it's also Zareth's Q. Uh, because it stuns and you charge it and you fire it and it does damage. If you play Dota, this is Keeper of the Light. Uh, like very, very, very good uh when it hits. Mike is gonna buy armor rouge now. I I mean that's always what happens after I talk about something <laughs> on the podcast. I'm like, oh, this sounds fun. <laughs> okay, <laughs> sure. Uh, so that is Incinerate and its uh upgrade choices. There's also yeah. Will O Wisp, which we've already gone over. That's the one that slows. Uh, and Will O Wisp can either become Flame Charge or Psy Shock, which is a strange set of things that Will O Wisp can yeah. upgrade into. Okay, but, hey, whatever. We're here. Uh, for flame charge, has the user cloak themselves in flame and charge in the designated oh, wow. direction? Oh, uh, dealing damage to opposing Pokemon uh, the user hits and sh shoving them. Oh, I almost said slowing them, but no, it's shoving them for half a second. When this move hits an opposing Pokemon, the user is granted a shield for three seconds, and this move's cooldown is reduced by twenty percent. Okay. For three seconds after using this move, the cannon gauge becomes full and will not decrease after boosted attacks are used. That is crazy, though. Um, at level 13, reduces mm. the damage the user receives by 20% for three seconds after this move hits an opposing Pokemon. So you can tank yourself up with this with, with Flame Charge. Yeah, If you even use that with Fire shield. Spin. Oh. Yeah, on top of that, I mean, this is clearly meant to be used with fire spin as well. Because yeah. this is how you close that gap. This is how you get close as a range attacker. Mm -hmm. And that shield, do you see the percentage of your special attack that's used for the shield? That's, that's 240%. Actually yeah. That's that's a lot. Yeah. It's a big number. So this is kind of what, what pushes me over the edge with uh, fire spin flame charge rather than like armor cannon and something else. Uh, because that... It, it fully charges your your armor cannon gauge, right? So, like, mm -hmm. you're firing boosted attacks over and over and over with flame charge. You become this, like, super tanky monster when you have uh, fire spin up and flame charge hits something uh, at when you're past level 13 anyway and get that reduced damage uh, buff. But it's, like, 
I don't know, man. Like the the damage that you miss from armor cannon is kind of made up from the from your auto attacks, your boosted auto attacks. Yeah. I don't know. It's still yeah. like skill shots though. We we still have side shock to read, but yeah, honestly, yeah. flame charge and uh flame charge is you're not gonna pair flame charge and armor cannon. I think that's that's I would that agree goes with that. without saying. You you'd pair flame charge with fire spin. And right. I'm presuming you'd pair armor cannon with Psy Shock. That is typically how, and for people who don't, yeah. uh, you know, frequent Pokemon Unite, that is typically how people, how, how Pokemon Unite builds uh, their Pokemon. They'll build, wh- whoops, hit my mic, one good set and another good set. Mm-hmm. Um, and then yes, if so. you feel like mix and matching, you are, you're in the kitchen, friend. Some Pokemon it works really well with, others not so much. Um, I think Dodrio is is kind of a Pokemon like that. Um, Gardevoir even to some extent. Gardevoir can go back and forth between Moonblast and uh, Psychic, yeah. Yeah. But um, it's pretty much always just Psyshock. Right. I mean, that is the <laughs> one you, you always want to get. You don't want to yeah. get Future Sight. No. Uh, so for Psyshock, Psyshock has the user materialize odd psychic waves to attack in three areas of effect in front of themselves. That sounds dealing, familiar. Yeah, uh, right? <laughs> Speaking of Psyshock. <laughs> Speaking uh, of Gardevoir. <laughs> dealing damage to opposing Pokemon hit while ignoring 50% of their special defense. Oh. The third attack throws opposing Pokemon hit for 0.7 seconds. Multiple uh, of the area of effect... Multiple of the areas of effect can hit the same opposing Pokemon, but... The second damage instance will be reduced by 20% and the third by 50%. Okay, so it ticks three times. Each explosion does a little bit less. Okay. Okay. But the the whole point is you're cutting their special defense in half here, though. Well, you are, but just for just for Psy Shock. It seems like this only is for this move. Wait, really? It doesn't include so so you can't just like pair this with armor cannon and blow them up? I might be wrong, but it the way it reads to me is saying the damage that this deals ignores 50% of their special defense. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, for three seconds after using this move, the cannon gauge becomes full and will not decrease after boosted attacks are used. Okay. So here is, again, the the your second move enables your boosted attacks, regardless of flame charge or psi shock. Yeah. And with fire spin, it works because you're, you're defensive. And you can just keep on shooting. But with armor cannon, it is worth mentioning, too, that at level 11, it increases the range of your auto attacks. So if you're using mm-hmm. size shock to do damage, you can still just fire off like super long range uh, or longer range auto attacks as well. And then I love, at level I love 13, the name of this Unite move. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, Armor Rouge's Unite move is Psy Kaboom, and just before we get to that, Psy Shock at level 13 increases the move's area of effect, which, cool. Yay. Psy Kaboom, <laughs> they ran out of words to use, has the user jump up, <laughs> becoming unstoppable for 1.85 seconds, and That's charge psychic seconds, power man. for one second, then creates an area that leaves opposing Pokemon unable to act. While the user is charging psychic power... The Unite move can be used again to adjust the position of the area. User then fires a ball of flame toward the center of the area, dealing damage to opposing Pokemon and throwing them away from the center of the area. So it it catches That's Pokemon lot. first. Yeah. Makes them unable to act, so they're Gardevoir. It's stunning them. Yeah, great. Gardevoir Alt. Gardevoir Alt. And then big ball of fire falls down. And then 30% uh, movement speed, 30% CDR, and 30% max HP seal. Or 20% max great. HP seal. Great. I yeah. think that's a... Uh, the Unite move kind of is standard. Yeah. Nothing shocking here. This doesn't seem like a difficult Pokemon to play by any means. It's not like there are some Pokemon that get released that are just, like, very difficult. Right. Like, I would say Sarah Ledge seems a lot more difficult than Armor Ridge does. Armor is pretty self-explanatory. Right. I feel like we... Have we not gotten a special attack 
attacker in a while. I don't know about I think that. The last one is Inteleon. I but feel even like Italian we have is not a really lot one. of those, though. Like, I'm just looking at all of the, the ranged special attacker attackers, right? We've got Armor Rouge, Chandler, Cramorant, Delphox, Espeon, Gardevoir, Glaceon, Inteleon, Mew, Mewtwo, Y, Maridon, Ninetales, Pike, Pikachu, Sylveon, Venusaur. Like, we've got a lot. Yeah. This is just another one. Right. You know what we need? We need a melee special attacker. We don't have any of those. I don't think we do. Melee we have special. Wiggly tough. Oh. I suppose. Okay, I guess we have a couple Gengar. Gengar's one. G- yeah. Gengar, Gudra, Mr. Mime, Wiggly Tough, Clefable, Blissey are the ones that they say here. Right. We have but none those that are, are classified as attackers, though. No, no, no. Attackers are usually always ranged. That's like their thing. They're 80 carries. Yeah. I want a melee AD carry. That's what I'm saying. You want a melee AD carry. <laughs> I want I want someone to pick set in the bottom lane, you know? <laughs> it's called Garchomp. I guess, you know what? That's true. <laughs> it kind of is. It kind of is. Actually, no, right. set is actually Blaziken, by the way. If you want if you like playing oh, set in, in league, Blaziken is set. <laughs> mm. Okay. Uh let's move on from Pokemon Unite before we lose every subscriber. <laughs> <laughs> I love talking about Pokemon Unite though. Like I, I really it always makes do. me want to play it again. Yeah. It does. It does. And it's a it's a fun time. It's just um it's hard to to straddle the line of like mobile games, you know? Mm-hmm. Cause like this one, it is and it isn't at the same time. Because you're only playing it on Switch. Although I feel like a lot of people are playing it on the phone. Anyway, I digress. Uh there i, I want to real quick before we get into baltimore um because baltimore happened over zoo weekend um i want to talk about the 2025 vgc season because i want to i want to remind people what we've got coming up this year uh so obviously we all know that a month ago world championships happened 2024 uh now we're moving into the 2025 season. The very first, first regional? Yes. Yes. The first regional happened just this past weekend over in Baltimore. Uh, but we've got a whole year ahead of us, folks. A whole year. Uh, for North America, we've got things like Louisville. We've got Sacramento. Is it Louisville? No, uh, Louisville is fine. Okay. You might be offending someone that lives there, but I don't care as a New Yorker. (laughs) (laughs) But as a New Yorker, I say things the way that I say things. And that's the way they're said. That's the way they're said. Uh, We've got Louisville or Louisville. We've got Sacramento uh, in November. We've got Toronto in December, which I believe both of us are going to. That's so rude to put a... (laughs) At least me that doesn't live there is going... (laughs) I'm going. Uh, we've got another one that's uh, to be determined between Toronto and, and EUIC. Yeah, they got to announce those. Let me know where that is. Yeah. It might be close to me. <laughs> I might be happy about it. <laughs> they're going to release it. And they're going to be like, Kevin's house. <laughs> oh, well, all right. Uh, in March, we've got uh, Vancouver. We've got another one that's to be determined. Uh, and then in May, we've got Milwaukee. Those are the North American. There, there are currently three to be determined uh, sometime between December and March, March and May, and then May and probably June. They definitely know where, right? They just don't have confirmation, so they can't say. Yeah, they're probably dealing with the convention center and, you know, because I feel like they've also consolidated uh, who runs them, right? Yes. So uh, that's probably a lot more on their plate than... than uh, than they're previously used to. Mm-hmm. So in Europe, <clears throat> September, we've got Dortmund. In October, we've got Lille. In November, we've got Gdansk. Uh, in December, it looks like. Well, uh, it's November, end of November to the 1st of December. We've got Stuttgart, which is in Germany, I believe. Uh, in January, we've got Birmingham. In March, we've got Stockholm. In April, we've got Seville. In May, we've got Utrecht. And in 
uh, May again, but the final day of May to the first day of June, we've got uh, Bologna. I will say this. Kudos to Europe for keeping them all in the same places. (laughs) Oh, yeah. It's it's pretty identical to just last season and the season before that. And that's That's great because these people in Europe know exactly where to go and what to expect. (laughs) Meanwhile, the entirety of North America is like, okay, well, now go this way this time. <laughs> I, I'm just, uh, I'm now comparing it to 2024, just out of curiosity, morbid curiosity on this one. Uh, and there were a couple of changes, right? Like we we had Barcelona in uh, September. Oh, so we're going last to year instead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, this year it's Dortmund instead of Barcelona. But then after that, oh, not dates. I meant locations. Yeah, 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 that's what I'm, oh, that's okay. what I'm saying. Is Barcelona was September, and this year Dortmund is in September. There's oh, no okay. Barcelona. Um, Liverpool was where we were in January, and Birmingham is where we are this January. But then, apart from that, like, yeah, Stockholm's new, Stockholm, Sweden. Oh, there was Dortmund actually. Dortmund was this year too, and so was Stockholm. Oh, they were just in different places. And Gdansk, I remember saying that yep. one before. Yeah, we did have Gdansk. Uh, Seville is new. Seville yeah, is that doesn't sound familiar. Spain. Yeah. yeah. Uh, in Latin America, we've got Joinville in uh, Brazil, which I'm almost certain I'm saying wrong. Uh, we've got Lima, Buenos Aires, Bogota, Rio de Janeiro, which were we ever in Rio de Janeiro? We weren't. Cool. Or, no, oh, but I mean, like, even oh, the 2024 oh, yeah. season didn't in have Rio. Rio. No, mm. that we, I think in Brazil, they went to Sao Paulo instead. Correct. I don't know why I said that. Like, I don't know how to pronounce it appropriately, but yeah. I'm not going to flex on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, again, I'm just looking because I still have 2024 up. And, like, we went to three different places in Brazil uh, last year. Oh, yeah? Was Rio one of them? Curitiba, Goiânia, and Sao Paulo. I just remember Sao Paulo. Yeah. Um, anyway, sorry. So for Latin America, yeah, Rio de Janeiro, we got Merida, uh, Fortaleza, Monterrey, uh, and Santiago. Okay, that's a lot cool. of Brazilian ones. Yeah. Yeah, there are three of them. It's the biggest VGC population. Makes sense. That's fair. Yeah. And then Oceania, we have Perth and Brisbane. Keeping it simple, baby. Yeah, keeping it simple for the Aussies. <laughs> um, looking forward, we've also got grand challenges. Um, some one's of which happening are actually right happening. now, by the way. Yeah. One of which, yeah, currently happening. Grand challenge number one. If you're participating, best of luck to you. Uh, I believe in you. Kevin believes in you. And uh you get know. those points. Bruno believes in you too. Yeah, Bruno. Shout out to Bruno. He doesn't do anything anymore, but shout out to Bruno. There you go. Uh, we've also got Grand Challenge 2, Grand Challenge 3, Global Challenge in January, February, March, April, and then Grand Challenge 4. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Grand Challenge 4 is happening in May. Grand Challenge 3 is happening in December. <laughs> like, there's going to be... That must just be for like last minute world's points. Like, ah, oh, last chance. You better participate. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Um, and then we've got Victory Road events, one of which just happened this past weekend as well. So we'll be talking about that again uh, today as well. Today. Right now. Again. Yeah. I say again because we talked about uh, Victory Road Challenge 1 last week. Um, so it's cool that like these weeklies are happening. I say weeklies like we're we're going to get it consistently. I hope we do. That would be neat. That would be nice. Yeah. So which one do we want to get into first? Uh, Victory Road Challenge or Baltimore? I'll go through Victory Road somewhat quickly because it does seem like this was a lot smaller in comparison. That's This is true. Oh, this has uh, usage stats. That's going to be fun to look at. Okay. Oh, cool. Okay, let's get into those first. So we had the Victory Road September Challenge number two uh, happen from September 14th to 15th, 154 players all playing online, which is fantastic to see. Uh, we've got usage stats. Kevin, tell me about some of these usage stats. 
Well, as you can see, grass types are winning the meta in this tournament. Yeah, we have spores fun. We have Rillaboom at 36.6% on day one and 48% on day two. And then Amongus, the factor is real. The meta has started. Mm -hmm. Amongus is here. 35.3% on day one, 42% day two. And then, of course, with the Amoongus factor, you've got uh, very fun things like good as gold being really important. So, of course, Golden Go saw major usage up above 30% as well. Uh, same with King. Well, not quite same with, but King Gambit as well. Uh, do people run safety glasses on King Gambit? Yeah, they do. Yeah, there it that is. That is a thing. Yup, yup, yup. Uh, it's it's kind of a toss up between that and like black glasses and dread plate and stuff but yeah know. everything else afterwards is kind of self-explanatory you got your your pelipers you got your your salunas your chalodons the interesting one here is this weekend sneezler just popped off yeah. like sneezler came out of nowhere and is just taking the meta by storm and it's a very interesting situation with sneezler typically because it is the fact the fattest not fattest fastest Fake out setter. True. Fake out setter? What am I saying? Fake I'm out user, a... yeah. It's almost like it's 138 in the morning. It might be 138. <laughs> Bro might be up at 138 in the morning. <laughs> Fastest fake out user yeah. in the meta. Has CC, which is really good into like a lot of the things that we mentioned, etc. Like uh, King Gambit, like Ursa Luna, like Archaludon. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. then Dire Claw is good against the other things that we mentioned, like Primarina and Rillaboom. And status is just kind of good in general. Yeah. It's kind of a stupid move, too. It's yeah. It's got a chance to sleep you, to spore you, and... Oh, that's sleep. To sleep you, to stun you, and to burn you. To burn you, yeah. Thankfully not to freeze you. I, they weren't that mean. <laughs> Uh, big shout out to uh, Scraw, uh, who put out a little short using that. Um, you've probably seen, heard the sound at this point. Mm -hmm. You know the "Let's go gambling." Yeah. Uh, oh dang it! Oh dang it! Yeah, just with the different statuses that that Sneezler did. Uh, let, let me explain a TikTok to you real quick. <laughs> um, okay, old man. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Anyway, the winner went home with $520, and basically the next runners-up went home with half of that uh, perpetually. Uh, down to the eighth, who went home with $65. I don't know why I said it like that, but I did. Uh, fifth to eighth got $65, third and fourth got 130 and second got 260 Whoopty. And shocker, Sneezer was in first and second place teams. Yeah, that, that's wild. That's wild. Mm -hmm. let's, let's talk about first and second here. So in second was uh, Dave. Hey, Dave. Who came in with a, uh, let me just make sure I have the right team up. Yes, I do. Who came in with, a, is that an Electabuzz? Yeah. <laughs> it's an Electabuzz. Electabuzz. <laughs> Electabuzz, King Gambit, Primarina, Rillaboom, Sneasler, and Garchomp. Uh, okay, let's... <sighs> Mike Let's needs talk about to dissect that this. You're dissecting this right now. This is a this is an Eviolite Electabuzz, Vital Spirit, Ghost Type Terra. It has Electroweb Taunt, Follow Me, and Protect. It's yeah. entirely utility. It's anti Amoongus, bro. It's anti Amoongus. It has Vital Spirit, can't go to sleep, so you just follow me, follow me, follow me, follow me. Right. It's the anti Amoongus. Oh. And so, of course, you have Pokemon that can set up beside that like king gambit with sword stance mm -hmm. you've got rillaboom with fake out sneezler with fake out you've got uh garchomp with choice band outrage Yikes. which just feels so safe when that's it's beside so an electabuzz mean. with follow me <laughs> that's too much damage that's a lot of damage kevin i need you to play this I need you to play That's this team. A scary team. I need to play this team. I don't like. I'll, yeah. I'll come back to YouTube with this man. Like, what's cool too here is like even Primarina has throat spray, so the follow me can help you set up a throat spray for free. Yeah, Sneezler is interesting as well. It's Stellar Terra Sneezler with Dire Claw, Close Combat, Fake Out, and Protect. This one's not unburdened though. It's running Focus Sash with Poison Touch, just to get 
just in case <laughs> your mm. dire claw doesn't hit that that status move, your poison touch can still activate on top of it. Well, also, you can just go for a fake out and cut out the middleman. Yeah. Just like, <laughs> poison touch poison him with, with a fake, a fake out. out. <laughs> yeah. That's wild. I was I was about to say, but then like you could on you could run on burden on this and like just try to trip your focus ash, but like no. I mean, no. I think once we get to second place teams, we'll be seeing what people tend to do with Sneasler. Right. And that's give it like a seed and a terrain next to it. Right. Okay. And that did happen with the person who oh, came that's the in first, first place team. Yeah. Francesco okay, yeah, Piopero, yeah. uh, who again went home with $520 and brought a King Gambit, Rillaboom, Clefable, Volcarona, Don Dozo, and a Sneasler. So this Sneasler did have Grassy Seed. It does have Unburden. So, you know, you set up the Rillaboom. Grass terrain goes down. Sneasler eats the Grassy Seed. I guess that's what they do. Uh, <laughs> unburdens itself and then can hit close combats and dire claws really, really fast. The other cool thing here is that we've been seeing a shift. And back real quick, looking at the usage stats mm -hmm. with Clefable just like taking over and Clefairy just taking a step back. Clefable is the 21st most used Pokemon. Clefairy doesn't even show up in the top 30. Right. The thing is, with Don Dozos being so prevalent as they are and how irritating they can be and how, like, you know, Golden Go with setup is happening, things like Sword Stance with King Gambit is popping up here and there, or Saluna has a setup move with Sword Stance as well. Unaware is more valuable than Friend Guard right now. Just because of how much setup is there. So That's you just wild. default yeah. to the Clefable. Because yeah, apart from that, like, apart from friend guard, Clefairy is, Clefairy is just a friend guard bot. It, like, that's, that's what it is. It's a friend guard bot with follow me. Technically speaking, if you were to look at Clefable's stats and Clefairy stats. Yeah. Clefairy stats are so bad, the Eviolite almost doesn't help at all. <laughs> like, that's how bad it is. Like, right. you can just run Clefable and be just fine. There's a reason why only very bad Pokemon get Friend Guard. It's for that reason. It's a good right. ability. But right now, the meta just needs Unaware more. And that's why Clefable's popping off. Yeah. I mean, this this team still has it set up with uh, with King Gambit going for Swords Dance and uh, with Dance Volcarona on. going oh, yeah. for Quiver Dance. Yeah. Uh, it is missing a... Um, or a choreo to, uh, <laughs> you know, benefit from all those dances. But hey, I mean, instead, we can't all be great gamers, right? Instead, it has the Curseon Fisher Liquidation sol Solo Dozo. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the Fisher Dozo. When you sure. don't have Ting Lu, you have Big Fish. <laughs> Use Big Fish. <laughs> we don't have any Ting Lu's here today, but can I interest you in Big Fish? <laughs> Yeah, so, I mean, very interesting VGC going on right now. I mean, this is a... It's so unhinged, I love it. It's, it's a very, very unhinged season, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, I, I can't... We talked about teams last week, and they're just so different this week. They're very different. <laughs> this is what happens when you condense the decks. It, this is what happens when you take out staples. Yeah. Uh. Well, let's see if uh, Baltimore can bring any kind of normalcy to this. Baltimore no. happened <laughs> September 14th to 15th in uh, what's what's the what's the state? What's Baltimore? Maryland, state? Maryland. Maryland. That's what MD is uh, for 647 players in Masters, which is pretty great. Uh, this did mean that. Oh, boy. I'm just looking at the, the kicker for championship points here yeah all 128 got at least 80 that's good that's quite a bit wow uh 100 championship points for everybody above 64 uh, 125 championship points for everybody above 32 160 championship points for everybody above 16 and above 16 they got 750 dollars above eight they got 280 championship points at a thousand dollars uh, fourth place got 300 uh, championship points with $2,000 and then second got $4,000 and then first got $6,000 Man, they're just doling out the money with this one money money 
And of course, the winner does get their 2025 Worlds invite. Not a bad way to start your 2025 season, Nicholas Morales. I qualified. Good night, everybody. Yeah, mm-hmm. right. Okay, I'm we're going to be now. We're going to be talking about the top four and the top four just at a glance. Real interesting. <laughs> Brother, no one told me it was Porygon 2 week. Like, what, where did this thing come from? What? Was there a meeting? Did <laughs> I, miss, I think I missed a meeting. <laughs> it was Porygon 2 week. But you know what's even crazier? You know how yeah. we talked about Rillaboom and its usage stats? And you know how we <laughs> talked to- <laughs> Yes. No Rillaboom in top it go? nine. <laughs> Where Gone. Did it go? There's more Vivalon than Rillaboom in top nine. <laughs> yeah. They're like the 14th place brought a Volbeat. <laughs> There's two <laughs> Flamigos. What's going on? What what is this? What what is what's happening? This is Wolf Blink ran Toad's cruel. <laughs> Toad, I mean, his whole team was off the rails, right? <laughs> Palmot, Hisuian, Typhlosion, Corviknight, uh, Toad Scroll, Galarian, Weezing, and and Garchomp. Like, that's a set. Well, yeah, it's Porygon two week, I guess. It's Porygon two week. Yeah, everybody had collectively held a meeting and was like, "All right, this week we love Amoongus, Incineroar, Golden Go, Porygon two, and Ursaluna." Like. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Not exactly all on the same team, but uh, you know, a variation. Let's make them very present in in this uh, <laughs> in this tournament. Uh, so starting with Toller Webb, who brought in Golden Go, Incineroar, Flamigo, uh, Ursaluna, Porygon Two, and Amoongus, which is actually all of the Pokemon that we just mentioned. Uh, why? Okay, so I can actually explain the Flamigo. Yes, here. please. So er- early on in the meta. The uh, there was a situation with Hisuian Decidueye where Hisuian Decidueye was actually being valued as a very good Pokemon because of how well it dealt with Golden Go. Okay. Uh, recently, at the time of Baltimore, Baltimore people started realizing, oh wait, we could just use Flamigo and then also have Wide Guard. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so yeah, now we're just running Focus Sash, Scrappy, uh, Flamigo because we could still CC Golden Goes. They can't hide. We're right. just always going to hit them because we have scrappy or immune to the intimidates flying is a great ability a uh, great move to have and a secondary stab because we're yeah. able to hit rillabooms and amonguses flamigo just makes a lot of sense right now so are you saying that the second flamigo entered the building everyone was like oh never mind with the rillaboom from it might be like, yeah <laughs> is that why her rillabooms are, are are missing <laughs> that's interesting it does run ghost terror so you can avoid fake outs and just brave bird them yeah that's that's so cool. <laughs> Fun to see Porygon 2 making a reappearance. Uh, yeah. Fighting Terra, Terra Blast, Ice Beam, uh, Recover, Trick Room uh, in this. This you know is kind of a Trick Room team, right? It's very, it does have remnants of it. Yeah, you can yeah. run Amoongus, you can run Arcelona, both in Trick Room. But you know what's interesting about uh, Porygon 2? Yeah. Is that you could still have value of t- with Terra Blast, even if you don't Terrastalize. Because sure. it's still just a good normal special move. Mm-hmm. Still mm-hmm. just a regular base eighty normal move. You'd you'd run a Draco me uh, not Draco a Dragon Pulse on a Dragon type, same way you'd run a Terra Blast on a normal type. Yeah. So you don't have to commit to the the fighting typing just to use your Terra Blast. And download just might give you more special attack for no reason, because that's the way it does that. So remind me and I guess the audience of this as well. Uh, Terra Blast on a normal type on a physical Pokemon. It, Terra Blast only switches to physical if it is being influenced by terrestrialization. Correct. correct. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It's a special attack unless you terrestrialize. It only right. changes to physical if you terrestrialize. And so, to be clear, it can change to physical if your physical attack is higher than your special attack, but it will stay a special attack if your special attack is higher than your physical attack. Only if you terrestrialize. Yes. If you terrestrialize, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. So with with Porygon, so slacking should not use Terra Blast and not terrestrialize. Right. But if he normal Terras and then uses Terra Blast and then terrestrializes, it then becomes physical. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah, uh, slacking is an interesting one. Yeah, that's true. 
I, I, I hear what you're saying. Yeah. So the, all that to say, the reason that Porygon 2's Terra Blast is good is because even if you stay as a normal type, you still have that like one downloaded extra special attack to uh, you're attacking with a special attack that is normal. And so it gets same type attack bonus. Yeah. Which yeah, is exactly. pretty cool. So which that's a nice little cool thing. Cool. Mm hmm. So that the rest was totally of the team is very straightforward. Like nothing else is too super crazy here. Golden goes Golden go. Ursula is Ursula. No Among Us is Among Us, etc. Right. Um, moving on, we have uh, C. Delway, who came in third, who brought also a quite interesting team with Golden Go, Porygon Two, Ursaluna, and mm. then Volcarona, Grimmsnarl, and Annihilate. Um. I saw a comment on the YouTube channel. I'm going to make this about us for a second. Uh, I believe you said in one of your videos that every time you bring an eye, you lose. <laughs> yeah. And one of the comments is like, nah, it's just you're not hitting final gambit when you can. Fair. And this one is proving that wrong because this one isn't running final gambit. Not at all. running final gambit at all. <laughs> Right, it's got Rage Fist, Protect, Bulk Up, and Drain Punch. Like, this is just an a angry monkey. It's a very angry monkey. Yeah. The interesting thing about um, this team is that this Porygon 2 is a very different Porygon 2 than what we just saw. It's like the complete opposite of what we just saw. This yes. one's running Trace, so this one's taking your abilities. Uh, running Ghost Terra to not get punched in the face. Trick Room, Recover, Try Attack, and then Shadow Ball. So it does it doesn't need the Terra Blast because it has a ghost move already. It's like right. you don't really need like Porygon 2 isn't finding a fighting type move anywhere. So that's why you needed the Terra Blast before. So you're able you're actually able to run the tri attack with this one. So it's, you know, you get some added hacks maybe in there too. You got the dual screens to make it that much more tanky. Unless right. they're hitting you with a taunt, you're setting up trick room and you're clicking uh Ursaluna flame guts orb stuffs, yeah. you know? I do think that Trace is very valuable in this meta right now. Just looking at, like, when we could have used it before, right? Like, before Legendaries, uh, before before Restricteds, I should say. Um, you got a lot of, like, Protosynthesis Mons. You got a lot of uh, Quark Drive Mons, where Trace just doesn't work it doesn't copy, for that. Yeah. It doesn't copy it. But now, like, they're not here. Mm -hmm. They're not allowed in. <laughs> so you, you can get value out of your traces. Yeah. You can get so much value out of trace. You know, imagine copying good as gold. Imagine copying uh, prankster, mm -hmm. uh, getting priority recovers. Imagine yeah. copying flame body. Mike's right? just looking That's at, just the, looking at the current. Yeah, yeah <laughs> just looking at the current team. I was able to pull three. Like. It's it's good. Volcarona with just Will-O-Wisp, Rage Powder, Struggle Bug, Overheat. I say just because it doesn't run my my quiver dance. Yeah, this one, this Volcarona is meant to be the the redirector here. So mm -hmm. you're you're probably mentally with like Volcarona and Porygon too. You set up a Trick Room or you click a Bulk Up with an Ilape. You start doing scary things. Right. You could do dual screens with Golden Go in the lead too. This is actually a trick power gem golden go. Power gem's cool. It's a oh, way to fun. deal with incense, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. With specs too. So very cool third place win. Uh Paul Chua came in second. Hey, Paul. Friend of the pod, Paul Chua. Good job out there. Regional uh, King Paul Chua in the finals again. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Shucker. <laughs> Uh, went in with a Dragonite King Gambit uh, Nine Tails Alola version, Alolan flavored Nine Tails, Incineroar Amoongus, and Garchomp. This one this, this feels, feels like a classically good this team. This feels right? very Paul. This team is yeah, the most yeah. Paul team that I've seen. But sure. what's looking at this? Like it just does everything. Like what? What? What doesn't this do? <laughs> You have your physical hard hitters, you have your spread moves, you have your weather, you have a Dragonite with Lumberry and Multiscale. We haven't seen that in ages. Also, right. speaking of Terra Flying Terra Blast, did we forget about that for some reason? It's pretty good. <laughs> Here it is. 
Oh, that's a physical flying move there with yeah. flying. That's nuts. That, that is way too much damage. That's one way to one shot in a Rillaboom. Sure, sure. Yeah. Oh, and you could run that next to Garchomp with EQ. Oh, Paul is cooking, man. Yeah. So there's a very okay. big reason. So I, I think this is just kind of saying like, this is why Rillaboom didn't hit the top eight because all the teams that <laughs> had <Paul> it <laughs> got destroyed. <laughs> Or like this you had to be is... like a really special kind of great to to make your way up. The... Wait, wait, look at this team though specifically. This team and how much it eats Rillabooms for lunch. You yeah, got Drag <laughs> you got Dragonite with Flying Terra Terra Blast. You have Alola Nine Tails with Terra Ice Blizzards. Yeah, and Encore to lock them onto a fake out. You have Incineroar. Enough said. And then you have an Amoongus. Which what does Rillaboom do? <laughs> right. Wow. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> so, sorry, Rillaboom, maybe next time. Yeah, Rillaboom really came in like, sorry for party rocking, and it just <laughs> fell. It fell so hard. I, and again, like, it's not like it didn't come to the tournament. It did. I wish this had used its stats because it was very played, just not at the top. <laughs> right. Well, it, we kind of did. Top uh, top uh, 12 Pokemon, they do the thing that, you know, Pokemon Company does with their big infographic. Uh, it like day one, Rillaboom was the most used Pokemon. Oh yeah, at thirty seven oh, yeah, right. percent, it it was. And then in day two, same thing. Rillaboom was second most at thirty eight percent, but it didn't hit top ten or top eight because it got dumpstered so much by all of the other Pokemon. What's What's interesting too, uh, if we look at the day one versus day two. Mm -hmm. We we see we see the Sneasler getting better. So more players that won more games brought Sneasler than yeah. they won. Yeah. So Sneasler did better. And then Porygon too squeezed its way in. Just kind of pushed the Ursaluna out of the Oh no, Ursaluna got pushed up. Who did yeah. he push out of the way? Oh, Talonflame. Yeah, kick that Talonflame out of here. <laughs> Look at me, I set the curb. trick room. There I'm the go. bird now. <laughs> <laughs> And then winning the tournament, earning their 2025 Worlds and by 350 championship points and $6,000 was Nicholas Morales, who came in with an Archaludon, Basculegion, Pelipper, Amoongus, Incineroar, and Mousehold. Mousehold? I hate Mousehold, man. Oh. I hate it, I hate it because right now, population, uh, population bomb technician wide lens is good again. Oh. It used to not be good for a long time. Because we had restricted that could just, you know, live it. Yep. Not a lot of things can just live it now. <laughs> That's the problem. And not a lot of my trick room teams are meant to take a population bomb. <laughs> so they said the Paradox make... Mons eat mice for breakfast. That's yeah. the thing. Oh, uh, so but now Mouse holds so in good. here with a population and being like, hey, how about this? Family. How about big damage? I'm a family. A M I. <laughs> L. Why? 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 why, why, why yeah. <laughs> uh, so what can we say about this team here? Looking at our it's Chalodon a with Assault good Vest, rain it's a team. good rain team. Yeah. It's a really good rain team. It looks like Nicholas Morales knew that mm -hmm. Incineroar, that, uh, that Rillaboom wasn't going to be played at all because he brought Water Terra, Basque Legion, and had no regrets. Right. He said, I don't need a grass terra. Screw this. I'm going to just blow you up with wave crash in the w in the rain with mystic water. Good luck. I mean, I guess there are Rillaboom answers, right? Yeah. With like hurricane and, and flare blitz. And I guess just mouse hold in general, like population bomb is fine. Archelodon uh, doesn't care about a Rillaboom either. It's kinda... That is probably what all this terra grass is. The Archelodon and mm -hmm. the mouse hold both have terra grass, probably for the, the Rillaboom uh, options, right? Uh, population bomb to to take it down from there, and then our Chalodon just to be our Chalodon while while uh, guys on the field. It makes me a little sad that Pelipper, not to take anything away from Nicholas Morales, it makes me a little sad that Pelipper our Chalodon won the first regional because it that staple mm. is still very good, and we saw a lot of interesting teams kind of squeeze their way up in this top eight. Yeah. And the fact that our Chalodon Rain just kind of won the first one is like okay, it's kind of expected. <laughs> It did sure. well. It's a good. It's a good archetype. You can't be mad at it. 
Yeah, for real. I mean, Nicholas deserved the win, but like, mm -hmm. I, I totally agree. Like, I'm seeing like two because that's what we that's what we expected last week. It's like, oh yeah, our child on rain's gonna win, and yeah. our child on rain won. <laughs> right. There are two flamigos and a vivalon in fourth, fifth, and sixth. <laughs> so like, I mean, kind of cool, kind of nifty. Uh, anyway, that is Baltimore regionals. I was saying to Kevin earlier that this is the first. Uh, pokemon regional that they're using their new logo mm -hmm. uh and uh, I, don't, I don't know man i i like it mike I'm, doesn't like it no uh, that, that did not sound like confidence i'm okay with it but yeah i don't know what I the old one looks it's like. a step back i think it's a step back i'm trying to go back and look at what the old one looked like so i don't remember uh let's see if i can is it just the yeah, sure. pokemon logo is that it uh yeah you know it was for the regionals it was like the orange one uh, you just send it to me. I did. Oh. Or like Curtiba <laughs> of all oh, places. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, honestly, Mike, felt, I do. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Like it was. I a do coat like of this. Arms. I do think this change was necessary. Yeah. I don't know. That this one looks a little antiquated. Like it does look old. This looks like something that I would, I would, I would draw up in like 2010. This right. new one looks a lot more. Possessed. Yeah, I I know what you mean. I'll <laughs> get used to it. I promise. I I will get used to it. It's okay. You're getting old. Change is painful. <laughs> change. I hate change. <laughs> Get change away from me. Anyway, uh, if you have enjoyed this episode, I feel like it's super long. It, maybe it's just an hour. I don't know. Uh, there. If you enjoyed this episode, you can go and leave comments. I have learned that on spotify you can go and do that uh so it is possible to still leave questions on there i'll let you go and do that yourself though i'm not actually going to prompt you anymore you the listener to go and and answer a question i'd like you to leave questions for us and then we'll go and we'll answer them or you can <gasps> also tell us your experiences in competitive pokemon and we will talk about them. We'll talk to a. <laughs> am I am I am I hip? Am I cool? Am I relevant? <laughs> yes, that was okay, funny. Cool, 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 cool. <laughs> um, jumping ahead of the game, uh, Parzival left a comment and said, "You guys should do more Pokidoku on the channel. It will be interesting to listen to." Also spent a lot of that time uh, during the episode laughing. Great job. Well, thank you. Oh, so someone does like it. Hey. <laughs> it took us a long time to figure out if people actually enjoyed listening to us doing that. We did it when we didn't have anything else to do. Yeah. Thankfully, we have a lot to do now, though. But yeah, I wouldn't mind. I don't, I'm like. I, like I think it'd be, it's a great way to break up like the very stat heavy episodes like this was mm -hmm. a very stat heavy episode i think we can all agree there's a lot of numbers that were were flying around and a lot of people eh, numbers might just not be their thing i know i don't like being read numbers too on a on a podcast all the time so yeah maybe next time we'll do a little pokey doku that'd be fun Anyway, if you want other stuff to do in the meantime, you can go on over to youtube.com slash Pokesports, where you can go and check out a new video every single day. We play with a different team over there. And if that's not enough and you want to see a, a same similar team tear it up on the ladder, you can go on over to patreon.com slash Pokesports as well, where you can go and check that out. Uh, you've also got a little bit extra of the podcast up on there, so... <gasps> If you want to see the uh, Pokesports pre-game, uh, you can go and listen to that over there as well. Uh, and that's just Kevin and I warming up, goofing off, being friends, you know, catching up. It's the good stuff. If you want to see me flinch things with the Dunsparce, check us out on YouTube.com slash Pokesports. That's the first thing I said. But yes, yeah. they absolutely should for the Dunsparce thing. Da -da 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 -da. I like that thumbnail too. I added an extra duh. Hey, you put a lot of does. <laughs> cool. All right. Well, until then, we will see you next time. Thanks so much for listening, and we'll uh, we'll chat with you soon. Bye. Bye. Bye.